Hey y'all. Hey, you know that, uh, that meme from the little women show. That's how I feel right now. How y'all doing? So how y'all doing? <laughs> Listen, if there's one thing about me, I'm gonna give up on a show that is just draining my entire being. And this show, I don't know how y'all do it. To the people who watched the entire season, honestly, kudos to you because I definitely fell off on episode four. Definitely fell off on episode four, but I saw a clip of the reunion and I said, this is a mess and I'm gonna be tuned in. So before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. There's gonna be probably a lot of gaps because like I said, I haven't watched this show since episode four. I just hopped in in the reunion. Whatever, that's my business, okay? So the season start, the season, the episode starts with uh, the whole cast talking about how they felt having two different mixers. And honestly, the word of the day, is goofy. The cast is goofy. A, a lot of things are goofy, but the goofiest of them all is production. And I agree with Dominique. Dominique said, I don't appreciate somebody leaving without everyone having a say on whether or not that person should have went. And we keep saying this as viewers, stop sending people home the first week, the first day, not even, at least if it was the first week, fine. But the first day, it frustrates me how Ready to Love has so much potential. And just simple, you know, simple little suggestions from the audience, they don't want to take. It's interesting too, a few weeks ago, um, I was on a live talking about Love is Blind and I was saying it sucks that there, are, there aren't enough shows about us and then when there are shows about us, it's hard to support. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a clip. I said something to that effect. Like Justin said, I think that what we see on these shows is indicative of what we see in real life. Like as a black woman, as a plus size black woman, it's ghetto out here for me, okay? Mm. However, um, what I see on TV is often what I see in real life. However, if I'm, if I'm looking for more black centric stories, I feel like there are channels for that. Unfortunately, Ready to Love ain't doing a great job right now. Oh, I stopped, but I stopped watching this current season. Yeah, I stopped watching this season too. I was reviewing and I dropped it. But like, yeah. I'm not going to Netflix. And it's so funny that Clay said this because I think it's rich for him to say it, but it's partly true. How are you going to look at this network and expect them to adequately portray black storylines? His specifically. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm not going over to Netflix looking for, you know, wow, they're really, they're really shedding light on our experience and they're really giving the black women and the black men. I'm not looking to Netflix for that. So I feel like if we really want more of those stories, when the ADs come out, we flock to them, we show them love, the Tiffany's, the Bretts, the Kwame's, if you want to, because representation matters, uh, the Laurens, you know what I'm saying? Or you head over to ready to love or that's the only black centric dating show that i yeah. know all i'm saying is people go where the money resides you know what i'm saying so let's go over there or let's rally around the people who we want to see more of and they're gonna put how many more black people were on this season casted we didn't get to see all of them mm -hmm. but casted they're like okay so these people these these people's stories are worth telling and the more we you know the more we support that, I feel like the more representation we'll see. But um, on the show itself, do they cast men who are not into black women? I think they cast men who we see every day. Mm. I will say, I think that... I'm sorry, I know it's taking long for me to get into the actual review, but th this just makes me think I'm even more upset with OWN because this is a black, well, it started off as a black owned network I would expect better representation of black stories on our own platforms. So if our own people can't adequately vet and or show black people, I just, I'm losing hope, man. I'm, I'm really losing hope. I hope that something like Ready to Love can be revamped because as of right now, it's giving embarrassing. Like I really, really, really wanna support Ready to Love, but I just, I can't. One show I, I am gonna give a try, Never Ever Mets. 
Name sucks, but the concept I'm here for. So stay tuned for that. However, let's get into the review. Um, apparently Patrice and Alonzo ended up together. Wow, shock. Um, why does he want to call every time I'm recording? Yeah, so apparently Patrice and Alonzo ended up together, but by the body language alone, I already knew. Oh, <laughs> they're not together no more. What is the status of you all now? His exact words were he was gonna be exclusive. Uh, call him with a, a, a woman. Oh, Ooh, damn. The girl that came over was one of my homegirls. My Jeep was messed up. She pulled up in a different car that she does not drive. Pulled up at 10 o'clock and was like, hey, what you doing? This is somebody I've never had anything with. So this is, this is a friend girl. Exactly. If I got something to hide, why the H would I give you a key for something you can pull up at any time? It took this man three days to be goofy again. <laughs> How are you gonna give this woman a key? Say, oh yeah, baby, we're exclusive. And then you're exclusively seeing other people. Like, sir, what? What? And I, no disrespect. No, that's not true. Disrespect is gonna be taken from what I'm gonna say, but it is embarrassing, me personally, me personally, me personally. It is embarrassing to watch people double my age fall for stuff like whatever Alonzo was trying to give because Alonzo was giving Goofy from day one. The stuff he was saying from day one was nothing to say, oh, this, this is a guy that I would wanna pursue, for what? From day one, he was giving Goofy and three days into their relationship, he fell back into, into the goofiness. I just like, I, <laughs> child, anyways. So um, this man gets so defensive regarding his home girl. And to me, the fact that he is being this defensive tells me he absolutely was in the wrong. And he knows it too. And then here goes Patrice hitting us with the Uno reverse, okay? And she says, well, I actually had a conversation with said home girl and then some. Let me finish my side of the story. Exactly. I met up with the girl that he- uh, Same girl? Same girl. Oh, hell. Ah! They had sex in May. But During this process- I, We had sex in May, correct. So it was just one time. I don't what, have sex with my friend. I ain't never had sex with her. This whole thing is a guy can't have another female friend if he's committed. He has been dating other women, sleeping with other women. How that's am so I? reckless. Don't get your damn key if that's what, what you want. At the end of the day, I understand it. After peeking behind the veil, Patrice has decided that she deserves better and that there's no salvaging this relationship. I'm gonna be honest, how did he even get a chance with you to begin with? Truly. They have this little confessional thing. I like the addition of the confessional. I really do like it. And it's clear that Alonzo doesn't actually understand what the issue is. I can't have female friends that I've been involved with before is bogus to me. So we had a similar conversation when covering Love is Blind. One guy had a friend who he had previous relations with, okay? And my thing is, if Patrice and Alonzo had this conversation saying, hey, I do have a friend, we have been intimate before, however, that is over, then I think that's a separate conversation altogether. However, you're saying this is your homegirl while admitting you were sexual with her during the process, you have been sexual with these other women, How, like homegirl where? <laughs> How is this your homegirl? I can't think of now one male friend of mine who I've had sex with. And he's here like, oh, why are you making it seem like I can't be friends with females? You can. Not if you're dicking them down at the same time as dating me. Absolutely not. Big, big man like that doesn't understand. He's, he's being dense on purpose. He's absolutely being obtuse. And I don't appreciate it, neither does Patrice, but at least she has decided to, to go her separate ways, okay? The fallout between Will and the other ladies was something that I caught a little glimpse of, but didn't get to see the whole thing. Basically, the rumor, which was started by, by Patrice, that Will is a thirsty, dusty hobosexual was enough to turn the women off of him completely. I was living in one of my staged homes. Anybody with common sense that God gave a bill ago could tell like Will is financially stable. You know, he has assets. He um, got mad because we called him thirsty because he was. What would I be thirsty over oh, a girl that got two? I ain't even gonna get into it. I ain't Please gonna say what say I want. You a scammer. I'm a scammer. Bitch. What you is? You a baby mama with your tools tied. What? Oh. You unattractive, you bad built, you a cool. little man. You got a BBL. And this right here, <laughs> 
is why I had to stop watching the show. Because respectfully, the show is called Ready to Love, right? In my personal opinion, I feel like if you react this way um, when people antagonize you or if you don't get your way, how ready for love are you? Because relationships are going to push your buttons. And if your go-to is to hit below the belt, me personally, I question if you're ready to love. Now, I'm, am I saying just allow people to, you know, drag you through the mud and whatever? Absolutely not. But the pettiness of this cast the crudeness of this cast, the way they're so quick to tear each other down. So I'm just like, uh-uh, ain't none of y'all ready for love. None of y'all. Absolutely none of y'all. How you handle conflict is a big determining factor on whether or not you're ready to be in a relationship. And both Mika and Will are getting very much not ready. Very much not ready. But anyways, let's move on, child. Patrice says that she is the one who started the, the rumor mill happening. However, she doesn't want to accept fault because... Actually, I don't know why. Why did, why did she say? I forget what she said, but I'm like, girl, you just acknowledged that you misunderstood the situation. If he's not sleeping on the countertops, he must be sleeping on the floor. Well, I'm about to go to sleep in my covers. He never said he was sleeping in the bed. Stage is a lot more broader than what you think. Mm -hmm. Do you regret saying what you said? No, I think he could have been a little clearer. But me, what you said affected like, people's perception of him is what I mean. To me, what impacted Will is Alexis. So are we saying Alexis was giving information Correct. to Will that came from the Correct. lab? Correct. Y'all are goofy. I know, you as, goofy. goofy. I as never hell. had you. The people who went home the earliest have the most to say. We gotta allow this between you and me. Time out. Continue to disrespect me. Calm down. We tear the hell out of each other, boy. We rip ourselves a new one. After we get thirty and plus years old, we ought to be tired of talking about each other. Now, Patrice, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how it went over your head that staged means there absolutely is furniture in the home. And it has now been confirmed that you didn't understand Will's situation and you still don't want to accept fault for spreading misinformation. Another person who's not ready for love. Sorry. I just, sorry, just not ready. Okay. The other women say that what was the nail in the coffin was Will's sassiness and that Alexis was constantly chirping in his ear and the women didn't appreciate that what they said in the women's lounge didn't stay in the women's lounge. Now, Alexis didn't like that. Okay. Alexis did not like that. Will decided to be the bigger man. The franchise is in the gutter. Ready to love? It is in the gutter. Okay. So we'll get in the, in the confessional. Will says that he, along with his wealth, are just bigger than all of this drama. It is what it is. We get money over here. Ain't nobody worrying about broke, broke way or broke girl activity. Maybe if you really got it like that, you don't have to talk about it. Um, I side with Mika when she says, if you got it, you ain't got to flaunt it. What's understood doesn't need to be said. Like, if you got it, you got it. Why do you keep saying, I got this? I got this and I got, and that chain, oh my gosh. That goofy ass Bilderberg workshop accessory. <laughs> it is not making him look any wealthier, okay? It's definitely giving dusty, lusty, hobosexual. Let's move on. So, Glenn is the weird puppet of the, of, of the reunion. I don't know why he's here, but apparently they're trying to give him a redemption arc. Um, waste of time. How are y'all? We waited three hours for you. You know, I was calling you and calling you, though. Know? Took my son to school, got back to the house, getting ready, got in the wreck. Talk to me about that anxiety a little bit. It's uh, happening right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just here so trying not to get fined. <laughs> <laughs> I got in the wreck. I'm not leaving using that excuse. Like, what's your issue? Open it up. You just gave me spirit fingers. I did. Cheerleader, so it's gonna be it. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spirit fingers. A little younger than me. How old are you? You've been holding hands all this time. Me just now eyes and mouth. He said that he is happy that he didn't take part in the process because everything happens for a reason. I think that that is a great takeaway. You should have never been a part of this cast for multiple reasons. Um, one, the cast is unhinged. We will start there. The cast is absolutely unhinged. And two, even though this man comes off as the winner, literally he is the winner. He's the winner because he didn't have to interact with these people. 
He didn't have to have any, uh, well, any, he didn't have a lot of negativity about him shown. He's still getting featured on the show. And then he's being paraded around to get to know the women who are still available. You actually won. This man squandered it all, squandered it all. I don't know if he naturally is this filled with anxiety or if he is just socially awkward, like, I don't know what's going on with this man. He said he showed up so he didn't get fined. You should have risked the fine. You should have absolutely risked the fine. You being here was an absolute waste of time. All right. Laylin decided to leave early because of the stuff she had going on in her personal life. That, however, did not stop the men from wanting to pursue something there. Nobody actually took the initiative, but the want was there. It's difficult to even watch that. Is it? Yeah, because I feel like I left too soon. She's a rare woman. And I was Thank devastated you. when you left, but I understood. I would have been pursuing her. <laughs> for sure. He creates that singular focus. It's a different kind of energy. It is. Yeah. Do you think she would have found a connection? Hell, I, yes. I believe so. She has a great spirit, you know? Leilin, girl, don't waste your time with no man on this show. And I mean across all seasons. <laughs> From season one to season whatever the hell season we're on, don't waste your time with none of these men, okay? She believes that God is creating a, a, a man for her or God is curating, let me say curating, because he should already be created. Um, curating a man for her, honey, Godspeed. Okay, and when God has you sorted, send him my way. I am moving soon, so let me just get my, you know, get my stuff together. But after I get that stuff together and he gets you together, girl, get me together. Send him my way. I want whatever energy Leilin is putting in the atmosphere because she seems to be the most sane person on this cast. Everybody else, very much scary. Okay. Um, the choked or spank conversation comes up and Alonzo still believes that he didn't cross a boundary um, with Koshia. How he doesn't understand is just very clear to me that he's purposely being obtuse. Anybody that's ever been kissed before has been choked. What? I ain't never choked my wife when I was kissing. I don't know how you can kiss somebody and be choking the hell out of them at the same time. <laughs> was this sexual to you? It was sexual to me. I'm allowed to say I don't want to answer that question. Tommy, honey, I'm a... <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, you're going to have to sit out of this conversation, okay? Maybe you don't choke you. Let me stop. Okay, so um, the bottom line is when somebody states a boundary, you respect it. Simple as. It doesn't matter if you felt the question was inappropriate, if you felt the person overreacted, if a boundary is set, you respect it. And for the simple fact that he pushed a boundary, it literally means he crossed the line, literally. So, Patrice was saying, listen, the statement itself, if it was said to me, I don't feel like it would have been crossing the line. Honestly, seeing the conversations that people have, I am people, um, on, on these dating apps these days, this is, I say I'm people, but I want you guys to know that it is involuntary. I don't want to converse with these men, not with conversations like this. Like as soon as this starts already in my mind, I'm either going to block you or I'm gonna just take out my boredom on you. There's nothing serious coming out of it if these are the types of conversations you have. So I'm not surprised that Patrice was like, honestly, I, I wasn't really offended by it. Um, yeah, but at the end of the day, okay, Alonzo, a boundary was set, you crossed it, you crossed the line. End of story. They seem to have patched things up between them, which is great, so we're also gonna move on. They play a game called who said it? Was it who said what? Who said this? Who said this? And this is how you know, oh, production has no content to work with. When LaRon brings up snakes and things like that, people making shady moves, you know, it's just, it's just real ironic. Was that not you? No, sister. Damn. Actually, it was dumb. <laughs> it was dumb. I was think even... LaRon is the biggest snake we have on the cast, to be honest Ooh, with you. Out of here. I never told you I thought you weren't a snake. You have cubic zirconium on. Right, let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. You just call me a door. Hey, yo, LaRon, chill, man, chill. No, I'm not getting up. I'm not getting up. So to go. So I need to pause right here. Somebody in the comments, please tell me what went on between LaRon and Alexis. How heated this conversation got tells me there's some history here. 
it doesn't it doesn't have to be that they're like lovers scorned or something but something happened i don't know why it escalated so quickly it's just wow and alexis is really a chihuahua you know i mean it's funny too because um when i stopped reviewing ready to love was when i was in new york and i met up with roxy says and chloe johnson if y'all aren't subscribed to them go find them those are their youtube names and chloe was saying it's easy to pick at kashia because of um Koshia's reputation already by the time episode four came. But the person who was really in the wrong was Alexis. And I'm not gonna lie, I didn't see it until Chloe explained it to me. And now seeing Alexis here at the reunion, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh, Alexis, this is embarrassing. So then things go from bad to worse because now the peanut gallery wants to weigh in and this just sends her over the edge. You keep talking though, you, you talk keep running your mouth. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm dead ass serious. Do you know? I'm dead ass serious. Watch this. All right. No, 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 no. You, get your hands up. And bitch, and bitch, I'll beat you. Beat me up, little. You little ass. And you too. I'm gonna beat you up, little ass. I just spent a rack to be treated like. Lessons, man. You gotta tell us. Do you at least want to go on a confessional? I spend money. I don't. I'm not giving a confessional. You and how you feel about. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. I can understand why Alexis didn't wanna get up and leave because if I'm leaving the situation, it's making it seem like I'm the person who's in the wrong. Is she in the wrong? I don't think so because Laron instigated this whole argument, but clearly you being in the room is not productive, so you gotta go. But on her way out, oh my gosh, chucking up the, the middle fingers and stuff and yelling at people, screaming at production, I said, mm, ready to love, huh? This is what I'm saying, like the way these people conduct themselves, makes me think in a relationship, it's going to be this or worse. And the reason is there's a lot more at stake. So your feelings are heightened. This is how these people act with people who they didn't end up with. I don't wanna see what a relationship, uh, you know, what adversity in a relationship with these people would look like. Just a mess. Uh, mm? Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> this by far is the most immature, unhinged cast we've had. Am I going to tune in for part two? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm going to watch part two. Okay. But am I impressed with this cast? No, guys. Please let me know what your highlights of the season were. What your highlights of the season were. Yeah. Because I'm struggling to find reasons to keep watching this show. This show has to be in the bin. If they want to come with a rebrand and have it be the same structure, maybe. But the words ready to love in that sequence, throw them out throw them out this is embarrassing child anyways apparently there's one successful love story that's between what's his name justin justin and mika we'll have to wait and see what goes on with those two as always like comment share and subscribe oh in the comments guys please tell me what was this whole drama um between was it Chaz and some voice note phone hacking situation apparently the youtubers got involved don't don't put me in the mix but i just want to know what happened thank you very much with that being said i will see you in the next one